bless his name. It's time to praise his name. When evil is rising, 
You're rising higher with power to save, with power to save.
you, Jesus, that you know my end from my beginning. God, we praise you. We give you praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
Benny. Praise God. Any more prayer requests? I want to ask prayers for myself. As I am getting older, I'm finding out some new experiences. <laughs> and uh, praise God. I am glad that we serve a miracle working God. That not matter how small the request is, or how large or how great, nothing is impossible for our God. Praise God. I believe in the God of right now. May I have those that uh, are praying for their family members for the city? If you can come up here also. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And in the power of the word of God. Lord God, right now, Lord, I thank you in advance. I release your miracles. I release the healings in your body, family members, restoration, healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release it now in Jesus' name. Healing, miracle, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those that need salvation. Family members. In the name of Jesus, God, speak to the heart. In Philippians, it says, Now ye Philippians know also that at the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once again unto my necessity. And this is the reason, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound 
to your account. When we give to God, it abounds to our account. It makes us better. It helps us. It's when we give, we receive from God. So let's remember that. Let's go ahead and stand. And we have three methods of giving. You can give through the Cash App. You can give through the um, website on greatcommissionpc.org. And you can also put, uh, use the offering baskets. Just pray real fast and ask God to bless this offering. Then we want you to shake hands with each other and be friendly. Lord, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for giving the opportunity to give to you, Lord Jesus, and all those great things that you do for us all the time. We appreciate you, Jesus, in your precious, precious name. Amen. Amen. She's just 
what she's done in our family. Um, okay. Come close. <laughs> come close. But, but what, she does, what she's done in our family, we, we made a decision many, many years ago to homeschool our kids. And um, that what, she, what she's done, it's impressed me because I, I, I saw kids that knew nothing. And it's just amazing to me that they learn something. And right. she's taken them from everything they know, they know from her. <laughs> and then it's validated when they go to college and they're outside of her auspices and somebody else is teaching them, somebody else is grading their papers and they're performing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just thank God for a mother like this. Yeah. Um, but then the, she does things that I can't do. And, and I know a lot of you women do the same thing in your home, but it, I got the witness in mine right. um, through this lady. Mm -hmm. And got to see her be just an incredible, loving mother and just what my kids needed. And so thankful for her love for God. And I know that's what makes her because we, we all have that, or every woman, I believe, has that from God. But when you have a relationship with God, it further enhances your ability to be whatever you were being. Because when he loves you and you love him, then he can begin to channel that through you and allow your life to be reflective of his love. Praise God. Thank you. Love you. Does everybody believe that? Amen. Yes. Praise God. I, I know that today there is a particular thing that's been on my mind for the net for the last week. It's just, you know, it's something else how God allows whatever he needs to bring what he's talking to you about. Sunday school is dismissed over to my left-hand side. And uh, you're going to go in there, you Sunday school kids, and have a great time. But, you know, it's amazing how to me how God operates, how he works. He's not in a box. He's hard to figure out. And I'm glad he's hard to figure out because he's leading me. I can't map out exactly what God's going to do. Sometimes I wish I could like we all do. But the fact of the matter is that God works as the saying goes in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He does. Because he rarely comes down a street that you and I recognize. Many times he does things in a very, very unique and different way. Amen. But we're thankful to God that he does. That he is who he is and he acts as he acts. Praise God. He's sovereign. Praise God. Let's stand today. I want to take you to the word of God. And I have a message that uh, God has given me this morning for Mother's Day. And, you know, God just had this unique way of bringing this to my attention. I could think of nothing else. <laughs> this is how God does it. He, he does this a process of elimination. He eliminates every other thought from my mind and he'll bring what he wants me to say. So this morning, if you'll turn to uh, 1 Kings chapter number 6. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, verse number 9, get thee to Zarephath which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. 
So he rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gates of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray, the little water in the vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray, thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Verse number 13, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah spake. Let's put our Bibles down for a moment. Hallelujah. Let's talk to the Lord. Father, we love you today. We're in your presence where there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there's pleasure forevermore. God, you know the circumstances are plenty in the lives of your people. You know what's happening, God, in each individual circumstance, Lord. You know the intricacies of every detail, Lord, of each of our lives. And God, I thank you today for your word that was written many, many years ago, but still adequately, accurately, and precisely addresses everything. You have the answer. You're in charge. You're in control. And we thank you today, Lord, that we can lean on you and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to preach today from this thought. A Mother's Day. A Mother's Day. God rarely uses solutions we suggest or think of as the means to deliver us out of trouble. This is because He's never in trouble in the first place. He just requires our absolute trust in Him that even though all we can see is insurmountable challenges, He is working it out according to His prescriptive plan. There are no nuances or surprises because he already knows how each thing will play out. We don't. Which is why he tells us to trust him. Not an easy thing to do when you're looking through eyes of flesh and your own understanding is what you're relying on and depending upon. Many times our happiness and our peace depends upon whom we trust. What you can see or what you trust or who you trust to see into your future. Praise God. It was just an ordinary day of a very long struggle. Nothing seemed to be or going quite right, especially since her husband had suddenly died. Now this famine, where she was able to manage by tending crops and eking out a meager existence for her and her son, all that had come to an end with no solution in sight. It was hard enough trying to answer the inquisitive questions of a young boy wondering where his father was and why he would not return, wasn't coming back soon. She fought back tears many times trying to, to be strong for him while trying to put into words that a child could understand, only to retreat to a place alone where the tears flowed as she tried to cope with her own grief. Where was help? What was she to do as she watched every day? Her situation deteriorate from bad to worse with no family around to help. And as she had left her family to be with her husband who provided well for her and her son until he died. But now, alone with her son to care for and supplies running dangerously low, out of desperation, she cries out to the Israelite God she had heard about from friends and family speaking in passing conversations. The God who worked miracles 
that everyone talked about. She remembered as a child hearing about the exploits of their famed King David and how he, as a mere youth, had slain the Philistine giant Goliath with just a slingshot. The many stories about the incredible wealth that he had amassed for his son Solomon and the incredible ornate temple that he built for God, overlaid with the finest gold. And how the presence of God had filled the temple when he went to dedicate it, insomuch that smoke was so thick that the priests could not even minister as the Shekinah glory came down. Come on now. Every day she measured as the meal was running low and the oil was running out. She even tried to cut back on the amount she was using for each cake to stretch it out for a while. But she had finally come to the end. And there was just one cake left. Knowing all the stories about this God who intervened in ways like no other God ever would or could, she began to cry out to him, even making promises and hope that she would gain favor with him to at least hear her plea. God was punishing his people for their rebelliousness as they served idols under the false god Ahab and Queen Jezebel from her nation. She was familiar with the gods that they pushed and what Jezebel worshipped and how they worshipped and how all the sensuality that was into the Baal worship and even the child sacrifices and things of that nature. But in the process, Elijah had spoken to a King Ahab and told him that God says it will not rain until I declare it would. Everyone was being hurt by this, including Elijah at first. God was feeding him daily by the book Cherith, and ravens were bringing him food. But in the plans and wisdom of God, probably because of this widow's crying out to him, he changed the plans for Elijah's provision and sent him to her, not when she had plenty for everybody, but when she was down to her very last. I don't have the answer for why in every case, but this is certainly how God works in so many situations. Yes. He delivers when certain destruction would, un uh, would, would unfold otherwise. Let's read verse number 12 really carefully. Verse number 12 says, And when he asked for a cake, she said she had none, but a handful of meal. She didn't even have enough for a cake. God let it get down that low. But that's precisely when God steps in, when nobody else gets the credit for what God's going to do. Right, right. Sometimes you wonder, well, where are you at, God? Where? I'm praying, I'm crying. I don't know what to do. Yes. Those thoughts come through our minds. Those thoughts, those words come out of our mouths. And we wonder, God, where are you? Yes. God went outside of Israel. This is really unique. I mean, sometimes this story, we, we, we know this story. But God goes outside of Israel. I think part of the reason, he had told Elijah at one point, I have 700 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. So there were people in Israel that God went to. But here's somebody that's outside of Israel who Jesus would have said to, like he said to another lady from her, her town, her area, yes. who asked about her son, or her daughter rather, that was grievously vexed of the devil. She was from the same area. She came to Jesus, and Jesus said, I can't give the children's bread to dogs. But here in Elijah's case, this is exactly what God's doing. He's reaching out. As a matter of fact, he sent the prophet outside of Israel to Zidon, to Zarephath. And here is a widow that is not an Israelite. This is why I, this is one of those fascinating, fascinating stories that I, I love to read in the Old Testament that lets me know that, that God has always been about everybody. It's not just the Jews. Right. The Jews were the way that God wanted to show an example to everybody how he yes. wanted to love and take care of people right. and they wanted to care for us. Because right. there was a promise to Abraham who worshipped God and who was, who was the father of faith. Right. There was a promise that God was fulfilling. Yes. 
But God always wanted to deal with everybody. God always wanted to save everybody. Yes, yes. That's why there was provision, even in the law, for people that weren't inside the camp of Israel to come and join. Mm -hmm. But here's this lady that there's seemingly no reason to deal with her situation. Because there's many people that are going through the same situation as her. And sometimes you think that you're unique. I'm here alone, and God has left me by myself. There's, and she really, she didn't have a claim to the God of Israel. That was their God. I'm, I'm a, a Zidonian. I'm, I'm from Zarephath. I don't have a claim to the God of Israel. But somehow, there's a relationship of some sort. Some of the things that she says. You know, when Elijah first addressed her, you know, she makes a statement. She says, as the Lord thy God liveth. The Bible says one of the criteria, when you come to God, you have to believe that he exists, on, that he is. Yes. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, and that he's a rewarder of those that diligent. She came with the first criteria. She says, as thy God liveth. Now, it's a common saying. But still, it's coming out of the mouth of somebody who's not an Israelite. Right. So it has a little bit, you know, that for her to say that, yeah. it has a little bit, I believe, meaning to it. It's not just a common saying with her. Right. Right. But here she is in her situation as bad as it's become. And this is where God flows in. This is where God comes in. This is where God begins to move. Here's a mother that's taking care of her son. This is, we're at the end. We're at the end. And this is what, this is what God told Elijah. He says, I have commanded a widow to care for you. I don't know how that really went. I don't know how God did that. But, but in her crying out, because I'm sure she did, right. you know, I, I, I'm reminded in, in thinking about her desperation, her situation, I'm reminded of Hagar as she was kicked out yes. from Abraham's house. Right. And as she was going through the desert, they had been loaded down with some water and yes. given some provision, but they, everybody knew it wasn't enough. Right. You're going through a desert, and everybody knew it was hot. Right. But you know, a lot of concern, you know, Sarah didn't have a lot of concern. To how that situation turned out. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that you know Abraham, God said to Abraham, listen, let her deal with it. Stay out of it. You've done enough. You're the dad of that kid, but you've done enough. Let her take care of it. So she sends her out with some provision. We don't know how much, but she gets to a place that she runs out and there's no water. And the Bible says that Hagar, being the mother that she was, she didn't want to see the child die. In front of her. Right. So she put him off and she went over here to cry. Right. And cry. And talk to God. When you're broken down. When you're at your last. Cry. Agonize. But talk to God. Yeah. Because the devil wants you to think that God doesn't hear you. So shut up and don't yeah. say anything to him. Yeah. But when you're broken. Yes. And when you're crying. Yes. And when you don't have any answers yes. and you have no reason to hope, yes. you need to cry out to yes. God. Yes. The Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, he will not refuse. Hallelujah. He's addicted to a broken yes. and a contrite heart. When you're broken before God, it brings it to it draws him like a magnet to where you're at. Yes. Come on. And God has to do something. Amen. So Hagar's crying out and God speaks to her, gives her a prophetic word. And then God says, look over there. And she looks over and she sees water in a desert, an oasis. God provides for their needs right there. In that desert, talk to yourself about that. Think about that. In a desert, there's no reason for water to show up there. If it was there before, she would have found it, she would have saw it, but she was desperately looking. But God answers only after the tears came, the brokenness of the heart, and the hopelessness was experienced. Then God answered. After that, the water 
appears. Listen, sometimes I've got to be broken. Sometimes it has to get to a place that feels completely hopeless, where I'm completely vulnerable. I have no way out. I have no solutions, no answers. And then when I cry out to God, God's just waiting. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. Your answer is in your brokenness. Your answer. Sometimes I've got to be broken. I've got to be broken. I don't understand it. I don't want to be broken. I don't want to be in that place. I don't want to get to a place where I'm out in the desert and I have no water and no solutions. And it looks like my end is here. I've come down and all I have is a little bit of meal in my hands. It doesn't feel good to be that hopeless. It doesn't feel good to be that supplyless. No provision in sight. Nowhere to go to get it. There's no store to run to. There's no Walmart. I'm trapped in a desert. But she was broken. The criteria, the criteria. Brokenness is the criteria. I've got to, I've got to be broken. I've got to, I, you know, things in life, some circumstances have come just for one reason. To break me. To break me. Because if I'm broken, if he breaks me, he can make me. If he breaks me, he can make me into what he wants me to be. Praise God. Sometimes I've got to, it has to crack, it has to break so God can read me. Hallelujah. Here she is in a broken state. Nobody likes to be vulnerable. Nobody likes to think about being in a situation where I can't get any help from anybody. And I'm at a place where I need God. But this is exactly where God wants us sometimes. Because the greatest work that God can do in your life and my life is right there. Now, does that make sense to you and me? Absolutely not. We don't understand the rationale because why do I have to be broken? Right. But God says, in your brokenness. That's what I can bless. That, yes. that food that he had in the hands that the little boy brought to him. In order for that food to stretch to all those people, there's some logic behind this. Right. In order for that food to stretch, you have 12, you know, uh, baskets, or just one basket you started off with. But you have the, the two fish and, and the loaves. And so now... In order for that to stretch, it has to be broken. It has to be broken. God wants to stretch you. God wants to multiply you. God wants to do things in your life that makes you bigger than what you are right now. God wants to take you, you know, this, this prayer of Jabez says, enlarge my tents. God, God wants there to be a, a place where you're able to have more influence. God wants to be able to move in your life in certain ways, not just in a restricted way that you know God. But sometimes it takes those circumstances at the Red Sea. When I see the Red Sea's part, all of a sudden, when I know my enemies behind me, I had nowhere to go, but the sea was before me, and I thought this was an impossibility, and God takes the impossibility and does something impossible with it. Amen. Sometimes I've got to face those things. I've got to be there. Nobody likes to go there. Nobody does. Who, who, wants, to go, who wants to think about the next morning? Now, God, I was doing what was right. I was doing what was right. This is what I've always done. And I, I, I know it to, to be done. I, I know what your word says. I faced Jerusalem when I did it every day. When I rolled up my window and I, I went to that window three times a day and I prayed. The king has a rule, but you know, I know what I'm doing because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And yet still, the king's men were sent. And I know that I'm going to the lion's den. Think about that. Knowing you're going to the lion's den. You know nobody that's ever made it out of the lion's den. Does anybody know anybody? Amen. Besides this guy? <laughs> He's going to the lion's den. Lion food. It's the last thing you want to think of being. They rip you up. They tear you up. It's not a pleasant experience. But he's going to the lion's den. Because he was faithful to God, yes. he's facing this. Wow. 
He goes to a lion's den, and then God does the miracle in the lion's den that we still talk about today. Yeah. That, that's the, one of the worst animals that you can actually face like that. Right. Right. But God allows him to go face lions right. because God's faithful. That's right. Everybody's life is a little bit different. Every one of these, stories, every one of these challenges in the, in the Old Testament... Right. And throughout the word of God, where God did something miraculous, when somebody was up against it, you know, the guys that actually threw them into the fire fell down dead. I mean, that's extraordinary because here these guys have man hands with you, take you to the fire. And I don't think the three Hebrew boys were just saying, okay, go ahead and take me in. I think naturally your body's like, no, I, I, you know, I don't want to go in there. And the guys that are behind you, that have you, they're behind you, they're out in front of you. They, they have you bound, and they're getting ready to throw you in there. As they're throwing you in, or they burn up or something. And these guys go in unscathed, into the fire, fall down the fire, get up, look at each other. You're not burning, neither are you. Isn't this neat? And who are you? Four flames, walking in the flames. And the king says, that appears to be the Son of God. Right, 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 right. God will meet you in the flames. Hallelujah. Amen. God will meet you in the flames. Hallelujah. Sometimes we want the rescue. We want to draw it up. Now, God, here's the thing. Here's the problem I'm having. And God, here, here, here's the plan. I have a plan, God. I have a plan on how you can rescue me. You like God? I, I thought about this. You're a great God. You got all the power in your hands. I, I really trust you. I believe you. And God, I have a plan for how you can rescue me. How you can deliver me, God. Yeah. Now here's, here's what you need to do, God. Here's your part, God. And God says, okay. Okay, but I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Because what's happening is bigger than you. Yeah. It's bigger than what you're looking at currently, right now. Right, right. And certainly in the life of this mother that was introduced to a prophet by being asked to bring a glass of water. And as she was going to bring that glass of water, she got triggered. She was willing to do the water. And it's a, it's a famine. There's no water. She was willing to do the water. But then she got triggered because he says, and bring me back a cake. I watched that mill barrel go all the way down to nothing. It's just a handful. So I got to tell you, I, I, I just got a handful. Huh. Well, then he prophesied to her. But it's not about just what's going on here. Right. It's not about just this. Because the Bible says, yes, this is the man of God's word said. They ate for many days throughout the whole thing. And it, until it rained, they had food. And God worked with that miracle. Right. And they, they ate. And great. So now they got the provision. And Amen. they're there. And he's there. And everything's going great for, for them. But really, it was about more than that. Because what we find out in verse number 17 is there was a day after the famine's over, after all the stuff is gone, that her son grew sick. And the Bible says he stopped breathing. He died. That's right. His date with death wasn't necessarily the famine. God knew. God knew. It wasn't the famine. God made provision for her man, that's right. when this would take place by sending the man of God there. You've got to understand the coordination. Right, right. You have to understand the, 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 the clear vision into the future that God has. He completely sees it when it's not even on your mind, when it's not even on your radar. You can't even think it into existence. You can't even imagine it. But God's already there knowing about it and already making yeah. provision today. You don't know what's going on in your life right now today that God's already planned for your future. Right. Uh, this is what happens. She answers a call. It takes care of an immediate need. But God is always ten steps ahead of us. God's playing chess for playing checkers. And he already sees way ahead. And that decision to heed what the man of God was saying to take that word of God mm -hmm. that seemed like, well, you know, what do I have to lose? She took the man of God up on his word, 
And when her real need came, her big need came with her son, God was there with the solution. Because he had already looked into her future and knew her need. God looked into your future 10 years ago and saw your need today, whatever it is. And you have to know something. God made provision for it. Even what I'm saying here to you today right now. God's speaking to you. Allow him to speak to you. You know, the man of God spoke, and she could have taken that or just said, well, you know, it's, you know, that's just you saying that. No, no, she took it as the voice of God because God had prepared her. How did God prepare her? I think that how God prepared her was her heart being broken before God. That's what prepared her. She was open to what he was going to say. And even that word of prophecy, she was open to it. Because she'd been seeking him. When you're seeking him and you're desperate and you're open, when God speaks, praise God. Is someone depending on your prayers for them when you hurt so deeply inside? We all have choices to make to keep looking through our eyes and be disappointed or to accept the challenge that God is making today to walk by faith. And be broken. You know, when I spoke about Hagar, her brokenness was an act of Her brokenness was one thing, but her crying out to God, even though it was desperate and it seemed like a, a, a thing that she was doing out of just sheer desperation and it had no other significance to it. It was an act of faith. Right. It was an act of faith that God honored. Just as when Paul was thrown into, or Peter was thrown into prison, right after James lost his head. And the Bible says that Herod was about to get some more praise from the people from taking out another one of the leaders of the apostolic movement. And the Bible says... But prayer was made. Amen. God honored the calling of the prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. God honored the calling of that prayer meeting. Because they really didn't believe it. They're praying and he comes to the door and they're like, no, nah, he's not there at the door. He's not there. That's just his ghost. I mean, come on, this is Christian something like that. That's just his ghost out there. But God honored the prayer. Amen. I'm here to tell you right now. God honor your prayer. God honors that broken prayer. God honors that prayer that's, that's not all fancy and, and it's just like a desperate cry. God honors that. God honors that because you're going to Him. You're saying, God, I need you. God, I need you. And, and who knew that God would bring you to this place where the brokenness appears and leave you with a choice? It almost seems like a natural thing to cry out, but that crying out is an act of faith. It's an act of faith. I'm broken, but I'm not going to be bitter. The devil wants to tempt you to just, well, God got you here. He's isolated you. See, this is this is how good it is serving God. This is what it, this is what you get. When all God's wanting this lady to do, Hagar's there. She's there. And she could have went through all the negative things. He kicked me out of the house. They, they sent me out without enough water. They knew that I was going to die. This is what I'm here. I hate that man. I hate that man. I hate those people. She could have went to a tirade because she sort of got set up. She, she did get set up. She didn't have enough water. I don't know if they could have loaded her down with more. I don't, I don't know the whole situation. But here's where she finds herself. Out of water. Child about to die. And then she... Is broken. She's crying because she's because of the situation. But then she's talking to him. Let's stand this morning. A Mother's Day. A Mother's Day. In one day, God can change your circumstance. In one minute, God can change what you're looking at. The thing that you've been praying and desperate about for so long, for God to move in. Sometimes that part that brings us to the brokenness is where the change takes place. God rescues. I don't know why. At the last minute, 
She answered him, I don't have enough to even make a cake. I just have a little bit of meal. I used to read that and think, you know, I used to read that and think, um, she said, I have enough to make a cake for me and my son and gosh. She didn't say that. She says, I just have enough to, little, I have a little meal there. Meal in the cornmeal or whatever. I have just a little bit of meal. And I'm going to make that and we're going to eat. It's not even a real full cake. We're going to eat with that, what, what's there. That little meager stuff I have left, that's what we're going to eat. And this is where she's left with the challenge. Am I going to believe God? Or am I going to draw it back? Hallelujah. God knows where you're at today. God knows what's going on. You relate it as you need to in your life. Whatever is happening. God listens to desperate pleas. I want you to know something. God listens to brokenness. The devil's a liar in this place today. If he tells you otherwise, God listens to brokenness. God hears broken cries. God hears desperate cries. God answers desperate cries. Hallelujah. He answers desperate cries. He answers people that say, God, I have no other option, God, but you. And God, my faith is at such a low. But I'm crying out to you because I have nowhere else to go. God, I, I have no one else to turn to. And many times women are the ones that cry out and allow themselves to be broken. Sometimes us men, we keep, we keep looking to try to figure out a way. And the women just say, God, I don't have an answer. I see problems, I see pitfalls, I see this, I see that, but God, I need you. I need you to do something, God. I need you to work. I need you to move. God knew when he made them the weaker vessel that this would be the reaction. But then he gave us stories in his word. The most vulnerable person in a society is a widow. Because she's, especially in those societies there, because she's lost the, the, the breadwinner or the provider in her home. She's lost the advocate to speak up for the family. She's lost all inroads to governmental or business and all that other stuff. She's lost that person that was doing that theoretically in the family. Sometimes women were industrious as well, but for the most part, she's lost all that. So Jesus gives us an example in Luke 18. He says, uh, there was a widow, once again. And the Bible says that she went to the judge and says, avenge me of my adversary. So she says, I have an adversary, probably a male. And he was an adversary. He's coming against me. I cannot physically handle him. I can do nothing. I'm at your mercy, judge, to change this because it's hopeless. I don't have the ability. He has all the power. I have no power. I'm a widow. And I need your help. And the Bible says that she kind of gives us the image. She packed the lunch. She sat there. I'm going to be here all day. And she knocked because there was nowhere else to go. So she was just, I'm going to be right here. And the Bible says for a while he would not answer. Now this is a judge. The Bible gives us an example you know, it says it's a judge that doesn't fear God nor man. Because God's trying to really invert this thing. He's trying to take the view that we see because we can't see what's really going on. But what our minds imagine. I've been praying God and nothing's happening. So it's like it's like I'm going to somebody who's who's beyond feeling. And God goes in and takes that. He says, Yeah, he's beyond feeling. But even that guy that's beyond feeling. Because he was going to be wearied, he says, let me answer her. And Jesus stops the story and says, now the real God, the, the way God really is, not an unfeeling God, but one that's touched with the feelings of our infirmities, one that's touched and moved by broken and contrite hearts, that God, even though he suffers long with them, in other words, you wait a long time, I tell you, he will answer them. Speak. Yes. That's what he wants to leave with us in that story.
Starts off with lady knocking, unjust judge, all that stuff. But the thing that God wants you to understand at the very end is that God will move swiftly. Yeah. Sometimes we say, God, why takes you so long? Oh, there's a time that he moves swiftly. The water sprung up immediately. When Hagar was in there, immediately the water sprang up. When they went, when this lady goes to get the meal and the cruise of oil, immediately the miracle starts taking place. But sometimes the brokenness is what's necessary. I invite you today. I invite you today. I invite you today to allow yourself to be broken. I invite you today to allow yourself to be broken. God, I, I, gotta, I gotta touch you, God, because I need your help. I can't do it on my own, God. I invite you to be broken before God because the Bible says he will not refuse you. The devil's a liar. He will not refuse you. But he's drawn to the broken. God is drawn to the broken. So allow yourself to be broken before God. Hallelujah. On this Mother's Day. Hallelujah. These altars are open. Let's talk to God. Whether it's at your seat or at these altars. Let's talk to God. Because God's talking to somebody. God's get, put this on my heart in a unique way this week. But to talk to somebody. God's talking to somebody. God's pouring into somebody's spirit. God's talking to somebody that's been at their rope's end. And you're broken. And God says, what you utter to me when you're broken, I'm right there listening. I'm right there listening. And I have the solution. I have the answer. I have the peace that passes all understanding. I have that solution. I have that balm in Gilead. I have everything that you need. I have what you need today. It's in my hands. It's in my power. Yes, I have it. Knock on that door. Knock on that door. Hallelujah. Knock on that door today. Hallelujah. It's the broken that get the answer. It's the broken that get God to move. It's the broken. It's the broken. Hallelujah. It's the broken. 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 Hallelujah, God. I'm not going to resist. I'm not going to be broken. Hallelujah. Not my will, but thy be done. I, 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 I must be broken. No longer me, but Lord, it's me. I, 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 I must be broken. Not my will, but thine be done. I, 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 I must be broken. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God, in me. Have your way in me, God. Have your way in me, God. Have your way in me, God. Oh, God, have your way in me, Lord, God. Move in my life today, Lord. Hallelujah.